right, we are here at my Vermi Hut indoor worm bin and we're actually starting a new tray. Now this doesn't look like a new tray because we did things a little bit different. We took a bunch of wetted cardboard, we stuck it in this tray and we put it on the lower level of the Vermi Hut. And that was about 40 days that we did that. And that's because we wanted to inoculate the cardboard in here and the bedding so that the worms would have an easier time when it became the active tray. And as you can see, worms are already infiltrated this. And this has never been fed. All it's been put in here is bedding. So obviously they have no problem without any food. And they have made some castings in here. But today is gonna to be the first time we feed this. Now the tray that was the active tray had been on here for 94 days and it actually started with just plain cardboard and was put on here without any inoculation at all. It was very interesting to see how long that took before the worms came up in here and all the different microbes that were kind of growing in mycelium. We ran into little different issues and stuff, but 40 days, I don't see any kind of mushrooms or slime molds growing in this right now. So yeah, that tray was on here for 94 days and um, you probably saw some experiments in there, the fruit versus veggies experiment and some other ones. But we are just gonna kind of mix this up so that it is ready and it's all kind of matted down. So it's ready to accept the first feeding and I'm actually pretty impressed with how many worms are already in here. So I think I'm gonna continue to do this. I'm gonna to continue to inoculate my worm tower trays by putting them on the very bottom while I'm waiting to have them be the active tray. So let's kind of get this last corner right here. And I'm actually gonna give them a hefty feeding because I already see worms in here and it's almost as if they're already used to their surroundings and stuff. I don't think it's gonna be a problem making this the active tray. And then what we're gonna do, the big picture here is we are going to harvest the tray that had been in here for well over 140 days. And the way we're gonna do that is by using a technique that one of the commenters had mentioned. And that is to put the tray that you wanna harvest right on top of here, let the lid open, let the light shine on it, agitate it a little bit, and then the worms will go out of that tray that you're trying to harvest and they will come into this tray. So I'll have worms coming from the bottom up from the previously active tray that we just put down here. And then I'll have some worms coming from the top down in the tray that we're gonna harvest. And before we even started this video, I put some more cardboard in some shredded newspaper and I put that tray on the very bottom of this vermi hut. So let's get started with a feeding zone. Just gonna kinda go down the middle here and make room for it and it's gonna be kind of large because like I said, these worms can handle it. And I'm gonna put some bedding down. Now, I noticed that the bedding became lower than what we initially started with. So I think every feeding I'm gonna have to put a pretty good amount of bedding in to try and keep the bulk coming up. So this is what we had in mind for a feeding and it is frozen, but you know, it's pretty thaw. You see a little bit of ice crystals on there, but it's not too bad. This is a whole banana that we're just gonna break up like this. I've got some zucchini. I've got one of my personal favorites, the lettuce stalk that goes really quick. Apple, which we've seen from some experiments, takes a little bit longer, some more apple. Some papaya, I've heard different things about papaya. Some people say don't use it. Let me know what you think about mm -hmm. papaya in a worm bin, but we're gonna find out. More banana, and then I've got some just cut up banana and raspberries in here. And then finally, we've got these raspberries that, oh, what a waste, um, got some mold on them and they're gonna become worm food. All right, just kind of put those in there. And then finally, of course, we will put our coffee in. Again, this is just used coffee and tea that I collected. It's probably been on average sitting there for a couple weeks, so it probably has its own little microbial content in it. And then this is grit, which is just pulverized eggshells to help them in their digestion. We'll put a little bit more bedding on top. There we go. And then we'll attempt 
to bury this here. And then we will call this a feeding. And then what we're gonna do next is we're gonna put the tray that we are harvesting on top of this. And I don't know how long it's gonna take, maybe a few hours. Um, it could be up on here up to a day, we'll see. But we're gonna put that on, agitate it, and just hopefully with the light and the dryness, the worms are all gonna try and come back into here. And you see in this bedding, there's a lot of uh, toilet paper tubes. I've been starting to shred them instead of putting them straight in because they take a little bit longer. But we'll see how the worms do with these. So let's go ahead and get that bin and put it on top. All right, time to agitate this. Get these little worms to be not happy being up here and get them to kind of try and find a better place to live, which will be conveniently right below them with a lot of food. So I've got to get every kind of square inch of this off the bottom and it's been matted down because it's had a tray heavier tray on top of it and the agitation just kind of helps them know that this is not a safe place for them. It's still remarkable how many worms are in here. These would all have to be baited out if I wanted to get these castings right away. And the castings are looking absolutely gorgeous. The little white dots you see are pulverized eggshells that I put in there for them to aid in their digestion. And they're also good for the soil and the garden. There we go. We're just gonna get this going and then when this is done I'm gonna put all these castings in my storage container and any worms that remain will just get baited out in there. But I'm hopeful that this will take care of it and that they will decide I don't want to be in here. So this is my Vermihut worm bin but I have two other worm bins and you can follow them. Subscribe to my channel and follow on the playlists. And in those, I do different things and you can watch from start to finish casting and definitely hit the like button, that helps me out. So I think we've got this nice and agitated for them. And if you wanna see how I build these previous trays, the bedding and all that kind of thing, you can go ahead and check out the video right there. Hope everybody's having a great day and happy vermicomposting everybody. Take care now.